Hello everyone! Uh, some people have been asking recently for a machinima tutorial to see how I created the last storyteller and so I am here to show you how to do it. Now you need a program called Machinima Studio. You can google it, it's for free but if you want to save your movies it costs 15 euros. So what you want to do is start it up, quite obviously, I don't know why you wouldn't, and it allows you to load a few games. Uh, whatever game you have that you'll be using for your machinima, you obviously load up, like in my case World of Warcraft. Loading takes a while, and yes, Cataclysm, there we go. Okay, loading takes a while, and once you load it up, you get this huge studio kind of program thingy-majiggy, and that allows you to create scenes with various assets from the game. Hurry the... come on. Okay, now what you need to do is have a basic idea of what you want to do, obviously. If you want to create a movie, then you have to know... Uh, what kind of characters will be in it, what backgrounds you need, etc, etc. So, uh, say you want to make a character. You go into models, character, and um, let's just go with the human guy. There we go. Double click the human guy, which will then load up in this lovely interface. Right, there we go. Left mouse key turns him around, right mouse key moves him around. Uh, you can obviously change all his appearance, just like in uh, WoW Model Viewer, which is extremely buggy. But yeah, okay, whatever, let's just go with Genesis Helm. That's it. We have a finished character. Now, if you have a character that you like and you want to use in your movie, you click this button right here, open a new scene. This then opens the character in a brand new scene. You hold the right mouse key and move your mouse back to move him around the scene. Or left mouse key to move him around in this way. So right key is zoom and left key is move around. Now, you can also rotate him and rescale him. When we have him here, he shows up in our models on this side. Now, if we want to animate him, which we obviously do since it's a movie, we would click on controllable, and then the character becomes controllable. Then we go into animation list on the right here, and we have uh, this kind of little drop-down menu for animations. So right now it's just default, but let's choose an animation such as... I don't know... Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Mutilate, I guess? No, let's not choose me too late. Doesn't really matter, the, the kick, right. And then he will perform a kick. Now you click on standalone to see what it would look like. Ah, premium feature. Right, this is the thing. My Machinima Studio was installed on a new computer, so I haven't updated it to my account yet. But you would click on standalone and it would show you how the animation runs. So then say after he kicks we want another animation. And this time we want it to be parry, whatever. So he kicks someone and he parries a shot. If we click on standalone now, we would see this character in this stage, kick, and then he'd parry right after it. You see, this would require one second for a kick, and then another second for parry. So that's two seconds of movie time. Now we can add cameras. <coughs> we can also make them controllable. So we can add the key here, and then add another key if we want the camera to zoom out, let's say. And then between these two, uh, we set the time that we want. So here it's time, it starts at zero, and then so we want this one to start at 10,000 milliseconds, right? And then that's exactly what will happen. We can also add lights. We, there's lights from cameras, point lights, you know, to change the way characters and models look. You can see the changes on the guy's lovely muscular body. Of course, you can also import other models, such as world... Dungeons, and I'm not sure if you can import whole maps into a scene, but you can definitely import all the dungeons. So let's say I wanted to use something like Sunken Temple. You look it up there, it will search for it in the files. Then find it, I just try Sunken. There we go. File top, we want a model which is which ends with the M W M O W M O model. There we go, world. Sunken Temple WMO. You double click that and we'll show it to you in the model preview again. This takes a while obviously because the model is very very large and has a lot of things in it. You can see all the textures down here as well which is pretty nifty. If we found something that we like we can also add this to an existing scene instead of creating a new scene. So we add it into scene 1 and there it is. Now obviously it's not quite where we want it so let's just move this thing around uh, have this guy stand here Come on, okay. It's obviously quite laggy because Fraps requires quite a lot of 
processor time and my computer is not highly advanced. So now that we have them here, we can add a new light, say, you know, to give a bit more of a feeling. You can also change the color of the light. So a black light doesn't really give a lot of light, as you could imagine. A white light, however, sounds like a totally bad idea. There you go. Lovely light. Now, on this scene, there's also some general settings. You can have a fog, which makes it, you know, gives it like this whole emotional thing if you're into emotions in your movie. So fog, make it true, choose a color, and then you have fog, which is great, you know, for controlling it, for example, with lights. Lights are also controllable, by the way. So you can make the light move in and move in and move in. Like if you fire a bullet, for example, and you make the light follow the bullet's path. Now when you have this scene set up, for example, so you have character one, you have the environment, you have a camera, you have some lights, you can go into file and render export, <clears throat> which saves the scene as an AVI movie, which you can then use in any other movie editor. Now. What I need to warn you about is that the save scene function doesn't work right now. So never save your scene. It, you have to finish it at one go, because if you save the scene, the whole models will mess up, the lights and cameras it will all go away, and they'll be all over the place for some reason. I don't know if it's a bug or if it's meant to be like that, but it doesn't quite work. The full version, when you purchase it, also allows you to add sounds into your uh, scene. As you can see, there's 48,000 sounds, 20... Or is it 277,000 models? There's lots and lots and lots and lots of things. And then once you see the model preview, you add them into your scene one, and it's there for you to use. And that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments, and I'll explain in another video. Hope you like it, guys. Google Machinima Studio. Subscribe. See you all later.